to uh, if we have to go to a referendum uh, if it goes through if these people uh, will not be objected in any way there has been said already the report has uh, used over 20 million and now we if we have to vote billions i mean if we have to move on Raila says it will, it will go to less than two billions and the ibc says it will be more than 10 billions what's your stand um both of them are lying to us because one or another they have a stick in that referendum someone wants to make money that referendum like i said it's for two things political formations and making money now um, they need to be honest enough and tell us the real reason. But they won't. Because they'll tell you, for Kenya to be safe, Raila has to be somewhere. Guru has to be somewhere. So and so, Umsali has to be somewhere. And that, to be honest, you see, um, I was telling a friend of mine the other day, these people, they will talk about empowering the youth. They'll never do, because they need the youth to throw stones. They need the youth when they're going for a rally. You know, when, when they go for rallies and they post photos and they're happy about the crowd, I feel sad because that is the number of unemployment. When you call for a rally on Tuesday or Wednesday, let's go say tomorrow, Hurupak, it will be packed to the brim. And they'll enjoy it. But for a young person, that shows the lack of employment. Now, when they talk about empowering you and I via a referendum, that is a lie. Because they come from the school of thought, use them, to control them, you know. Mm. They will impoverish you, so they come and give 500 shillings. And tomorrow you'll demonstrate for them. But you'll never see their sons and daughters. While you're demonstrating, their sons and daughters are busy, either like Kalonzo, your son is in Iala, the other one, the son will be, your daughter will be uh, in Poland. So you will be the fool demonstrating. So I like to urge the youth. That document has nothing to do um, with, you, with you and I. Let us be honest, that's number one. And for you to wait to be liberated, it will never happen. Because the best liberation is out of the mind. Where you believe that you can solve your own issues. Believe you me, the only person who can save the other youth is the youth themselves. These old folk, you know, this is what they say um, in English. Eh? Old dogs can never learn new tricks. These are a group of people who came via YK92, most of them. You know, that's where they started. And they have gotten to a full circle of their politics. Now it's time to face them out. And that's why I say 2022. I'm not just saying the issue is not just young. The issue is objective. The issue is people-centric leadership. And the youth should be rise up and be counted. That is my state. Uh, if, if, for me, Hillary, I think there's, there's something important that uh, the youth need to understand. Right. Uh, that when we will be going into the referendum, the only thing that uh, will be in the referendum, uh, the constitutional question that will touch on the youth is something that is being called uh, the Youth uh, Commission. And uh, what is in that amendment is uh, a set of uh, you know, functions of that commission. And, and, and uh, Nurino had already mentioned that uh, th this, will, this will be people appointed by the president. But those functions that are proposed to be amended in the constitution or to be included in the constitution are already present in the National Youth Council. In fact, if you read section four of the National Youth Council Act, it is more robust, it is more expansive than what is being proposed. So this is just a camouflage. It is just something that uh, should lure the youth so that when you are told that this uh, this referendum is about you you would rush and think that uh, there is something there for you but really there is nothing if we are, are, are serious about engaging the youth and and i must touch on uh, uh, inclusivity versus inclusion i think what we must focus on is inclusivity and not inclusion in as much as inclusion is uh, 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 the end product of uh, inclusivity we must look at uh, making sure that uh, youth are included in government we should not be reduced to uh, talking about unemployment so after you are employed then what if you have a bad economy then it does not matter that you have a good job i think then we must move from uh, you know the youth being reduced to uh, jobs and making sure that uh, you know you have a business that is running let us have youth being engaged in how the economy of this country is run in how the management of the affairs of this nation are run and that cannot be done by giving youth jobs or making sure that they are employed in fact if we focus on employment then we will be turning 
ourselves into uh, the problem of, of, uh, of the middle class in this country where you are comfortable with an eight to five job and nothing else bothers you. So I think uh, the youth need to arise and engage fully not just in matters of employment, engage. We, we need to see youth uh, talking about, because we, we have graduates of economics and finance. Let us look at how uh, these proposed amendments are going to be costed. What will, will it cost uh, the country if we go this direction? Uh, let us look at uh, policies of government, not just touching on youth. The youth must engage on, uh, in matters of agriculture. They must engage in matters of health, in matters of education. So I think we need to expand this uh, uh, youth engagement and let it be inclusivity and not just inclusion based on employment. Right. And Odin, with this uh, proposal being said, it might be, uh, we might go for a referendum come 2021, actually early 2021. Do you think as a country, following that we have been in a pandemic, everyone is crying out, they, they have no money. Of course, there are those who have made money out of this. But truly speaking, as a nation, are we ready to go for a referendum? That just shows the insensitive nature that we have as politi for, for, for um, with the politicians we have. These are examples, you know, you know, these guys, they forget the most important things right now. People have been retrenched. People have no homes. You are having demolitions left, right and center in the middle of a pandemic. All right. And now you open. But they'll tell you that it's not a must. So then you come and tell me again, there's a referendum that will cure all this. That's a hoax. That shows you they are out of touch with reality. Mm -hmm. And clearly they don't know what the people need. Most people, if you walk here and ask someone, what would you rather have? Food on the table of a BBI um, referendum. They'll choose food any other day. Because that document is just like, you know we've had so many documents. Mm -hmm. Why haven't you ever implemented the, the, the TGRC document? Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Why? We, we, when you talk about historical issues, focus on them. Solve that. You know, if you want to solve everything, mm -hmm. have a holistic document. As he said, have a holistic document. Be sincere in what you're trying to say. We have had so many historical issues and problems that are not solved by a prime minister, a deputy prime minister, or an imperial president, because that is where we're going. And you know what they forget, those who are part and parcel of the BBI. You know, in law, we say when you're forming a law or making legislation, Make one that is harsh for your worst opponent so that when they are there, it is hard for them to even to implement it. But now when you're making something so sweet, imagine how the, uh, how the deputy president feels right now that he's, he feels secluded, him and he, uh, his group. Now imagine him as imperial president. Would really rejoice that. And now they are saying we're going to have an office of uh, leader, leader of opposition. Imagine... President Ruto financing office of Raila Molo Odinga to disturb him. Would that happen? Yeah, fine. There's, there's something Hillary, uh, just, just before we proceed to the next, uh, to the next issue. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an urgency. There seems to be an urgency among the political class to get us to a referendum as fast as possible. Yeah. I really wish that this urgency would be transferred to some of uh, the recommendations in the BBI report because uh, Nudin has mentioned uh, the TJRC report. Mm -hmm. When you look at the uh, recommendations under land matters, uh, there's mentioned the Ndung Ndungu land report and the TJRC report. Mm -hmm. I really wish uh, Senior Rengo would also be given giving us timelines on when the TJRC report will be implemented. We would be happy as a country if they told us that by February 2021, the TJRC report will be implemented. The Ndungu land report would be a reality, a full reality under this constitution. So I think when, when, when we want to judge the intents of, uh, of the political class, we look at where they are directing their agency. And the agency is being directed at changing the structure of government. It has nothing to do uh, with these other bits that uh, they have attached uh, to their real intentions. All right. Uh before we conclude, now that we have mentioned uh, the gray areas and the misgivings of the document that you people feel like they need to be amended, if um, I'm now going the way of the Deputy President, if it has been to be voted in, what is good about it? Because we, we always have uh, the good, the other side. What's the good about this document? The good thing is that we've had the so-called peace, as they call it. What do I mean? 
if there was no handshake between Uhuru and Raila, Mariga would never have campaigned in Kibra like he did. That's, that's a fact. But other than that, there's nothing. I'll tell you for a fact, there's nothing. The whole document is just a vacuum. A voluminous 204 pages that has some blank pages. If you check, there are some blank pages, you know. So the document, and with, with due respect to those who formulated that, they can do better. That is shallow, beyond shallow. You know, if you do that, you know, during a graduate um, in law, if that was someone's project, you're asking, you'd fail. Because you have not solved anything. You've raised questions with no answers or implementation mechanisms. So what I'd say, the only good thing with the handshake is the peace. We no longer have Monday, Monday, Tuesday, or Monday, or Friday. People can, okay, you can work. You can try and, and for lack of a better word, hustle here and there and um, campaign, like Mariga campaign. Other than that, there's nothing. Honestly, there's nothing. I think, I think I'll disagree <laughs> a little bit. Um, right. uh, it, uh, and I will say this, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, we have not really experienced peace. What we have experienced is calm. Uh, there was a sense of political calm, and that does not translate to peace. Uh, if, if these politicians decided today to go back to their factory settings, <laughs> this country would, uh, will, 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 not, will not be a peaceful country. So I think what we achieved was just a sense of calm. And, and now that we're talking about what is good and what is uh, bad in this report, I think I will restate what, what, what uh, I began with when we were beginning the show, that uh, the only thing that this report has excelled at is uh, uh, taking an accurate uh, uh, medical history of this nation and correctly identifying the symptoms that we are facing. But it suffers an acute misdiagnosis. The other thing it suffers is a dangerous misprescription because the things that are being prescribed do not match the symptoms, do not match the medical history. And I think when, when we're talking about medical terms, that means that you're, al you, you're almost killing a patient because if the symptoms uh, do not match uh, <laughs> the diagnosis and if the diagnosis does not match the prescription, then you, it, it is akin to killing the patient. So I think uh, the, 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 the things that are touted as good they, they appear good, but those things are blinding us from the real issues. And the real issue is that we have a failed government. And if we do not stick to uh, the, the, the ball, if our eye is not on the ball that this government has failed in doing several things, then we would rush through this process and say this BBI report is good. And the succeeding government, which unfortunately will have these same gen women and, and, and men, I was about to use gentlemen, but I don't think uh, that, that, <laughs> that, that fits, uh, fits their, <laughs> their profile. Uh, these are the same people who will be in the succeeding government. So if we do not point out the deficiencies of, uh, uh, of government, then we will think that this BBI report will have solved issues. But it will just be a cosmetic repair. And we know what, what happens to make up when, when it, it, it rains heavily. All right. This is rather a rhetoric question. As you give us your final comments, gentlemen, I will begin with you, Nudin. The elephant in the room. Has this BBI responded to it because it was all about inclusion, the top leadership. That was the biggest thing then they added up what we have been told from the youth, from the women and what have you, as you give us your final com recommendations. For me, I will say this and I'll be clear about it. These laws that they want to make will affect the youth of this country. You have the advantage of time. These guys are living on what Safaricom call star 144 hash balance. They are here to come and go. Now, you must wake up and decide what you feel will represent you better. Laws that are meant to hinder your progress, say no to. Now, what do I mean? You have been told to read the document. Go ahead and read it. Challenge this document. You know, um, it's high time, the young men and women, let us move from Twitter rants, Instagram, Facebook, to reality. You know, they, you know uh, I like a quote by Dedan Kimathi. He says, the way to freedom is not easy. It's full of tears. It's full of lice on the clothes. It's full of sweat. And it's full of blood. The president during Mashoja Day said, the youth of Kenya should be ready to sacrifice. Now, my question to you as a young man, 
are you ready to sacrifice for your betterment? Because the economic freedom you are looking for will never be handed over to you. The doors you want opened, you have to break them down because they will never be opened. And what do I mean? Stand for what interests you and the country at large, but not what the politician says is good for you. We've had a scenario where they said, Baba Mesoma Katiba 2010, to petition. Now they are saying, to Mesoma Ikosawa, to petition. And then they'll wake up for two years and say, you know what, we forgot something. Let's change this. It's high time we know what really matters and stand for it. Mm. All right, I feel yes. if you have any comments. Uh, now that this is a youth-centric uh, show, uh, I really want to plead uh, with the youth of this country, uh, as, as, as my brother has, 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 has mentioned, that we really need to be awakened. Uh, we should not just support political factions for the sake of it or for the sake of uh, our tribal inclinations. We must interrogate issues, we must interrogate policies and, and for the sake of, uh, of this referendum, because it's going to come. They have told us that whether we like it or not, it's going to come. So because it is here with us, we must interrogate uh, this document and the impending constitutional amendments with, with, with very sober minds. And I, I, would, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would challenge, I would challenge you and, 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 and Ram uh, to, to come up with, with, with a program. Uh, you know, if, if it is weekly, then that, that will be fine. Where we analyze specific items under uh, the constitutional amendments and, 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 and tear them into bits and digest them so that the youth of this country can understand what it actually means to support or to, uh, 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 to oppose uh, this, this, this impending referendum. So that you're not opposing just because you've been told to oppose, and you're not supporting just because you've been told to support. I think uh, if uh, the youth of this country decide uh, that they are going to pass these amendments, then let it be because they have considered that it is actually beneficial to them. So uh, I want to exhort the youth of this country to make sure that we are not swayed because uh, this uh, constitution uh, that we, we are planning to change is for posterity. We, we, we do not enact constitutions uh, just to change them uh, willy-nilly two or three years down the line. We enact them, and indeed our preamble states that we are giving this constitution to ourselves and to posterity. So we must look at not just ourselves uh, 50 years down the line, but even our grandchildren. All right. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming and speaking to uh, young people, our audience out there, and of course everyone else who has been watching. And back home, thank you so much for keeping us company. They have been my guest tonight, uh, Philip Mwangali, leadership and governance consultant, Nudin Kagai political and governance expert. Thank you so much. You I was uh, sitting in for Ram Agoko. Hopefully next week we will be with him here with more in matters politics and what is happening around us. My name is Dereva Hillary. Thank you so much for being part of us. Have yourself a very good night.